I am a dreamer, as I think you are. Yes, it is a dream world. Major Langer, how can I help you? Politics is a nasty game. I think soldiering requires the discipline to do the unthinkable, and politics requires the skill to get someone else to do the unthinkable for you. This is Plausibly Live. Thinking back to my young life as a little boy and later as a young man, see if you compare it to this. There was a TV show called The FBI starring Ephraim Zembalist Jr., and it was all about how great the FBI was and what the FBI did to protect Americans on a daily basis. Later on, Tom Clancy would write a whole series of novels, the Jack Ryan novels, in which his best friend is an FBI agent of incredible, incredible uh, character. The man who always does the right thing and represents the FBI very, very well. Hell, even Mulder and Scully, right? In in the X-Files. They're FBI agents. And while they're skirting the edges of, you know, proper procedure, well, who is it? Uh, Assistant Director Skinner keeps unofficially telling them to do the right thing. Keep investigating. Can't officially support you, but unofficially, keep going. The image that we've had of the FBI throughout most of my lifetime is an organization that is as American as apple pie. It is tried and true and red, white, and blue. And it is the protector of American values, the protector of American laws. And the problem is, of course, that it never was that and still isn't. Harry Truman once said that J. Edgar Hoover was leading the FBI in such a manner that it was trending, wasn't yet, but it was trending towards becoming a Gestapo type of force, which might be the first of the references which just really piss me off. The truth was that the FBI, under J. Edgar Hoover, was doing things that would make the Obama administration and Operation Prism and the Bush administration and the Patriot Act and subsequent administrations and their spying on Americans, it it would make them look like amateurs. The idea of civil rights versus national security wasn't even debated. National security, or at least what J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI decided was, was national security, trumped everything. Civil liberties be damned. Now, the truth is that history has blamed J. Edgar Hoover for this. History has said J. Edgar Hoover was the leader, he was in charge, he was the guy, and he, he did things that should disgust us as Americans. But the question you got to ask yourself is, what did Hoover do? He may have decided or directed things to be done, but who actually carried it out? Who actually did it? And who actually knew that these were violations of civil liberties? That's the question you got to ask. Is the FBI, was the FBI all bad? Is it all bad today? Of course not. Nobody believes that. But the problem is that enough people and enough of the FBI is bad that pretty much everybody knows it. It's, I hate the phrase, but it's almost common knowledge. In Hoover's time, Congress, the Congress of the United States, was terrified of J. Edgar Hoover. Terrified of him. But what did they do about it? Did they lean on the president? Truman said that it was trending towards a Gestapo force. Did he do anything about it? No. They didn't do a damn thing. The Constitution, all the laws that we have are utterly meaningless unless they are faithfully executed. And nobody was willing to stand up and say to J. Edgar Hoover, this is not the faithful execution of the laws. And nobody in the executive branch, not a single president, was willing to stand up to them. Just as a reminder, the public oath, the oath that all public officials take, and certainly those working for the federal government, 
is not to their organization. It's not to the government. It's not even to protect anybody. The only oath they take is to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Period. And if you take that oath and you are not doing that, you personally are a threat to liberty. Period. Even if you're just following orders. Now, this week, the Durham report course came out, and this has titillated a lot of people. My take on the Durham report is simply this. If you're not mad about it, you're the problem. And I don't care if you're Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Communist, Socialist, Green Party, Prohibitionist. I don't care what party you belong to. If you're not mad about this, you are actually the problem, or you are a problem and you're still a threat to liberty. Why is it a problem? Because, listen, if one side can do it, if one side can use the FBI, or as Kelly Bundy once called them, the FIBI guys, to violate civil liberties, to interfere with an election, if one side can do it, the other side sure as hell can too. Today it's us. Tomorrow, (laughs) it's you. And it's still unconstitutional. It's still illegal. And if you're not mad about it, well, you are the problem. Again, I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. Democrats should be screaming just as loud as Republicans today. The FBI did this, but they're not. And believe me, if the positions were reversed, the Republicans wouldn't be. Now, all that said, I guess what really has me cranked up this morning is how many conservatives I'm listening to on talk radio, on blogs, videos, whatever, who insist on referring to the FBI as Nazis. Again, Truman never said they were Nazis, although he trended in that way. He said that the FBI was trending towards a Gestapo-type operation. We aren't there yet, but we don't need that, and we don't want that. But today, so many of us are just throwing out that Nazi term, and it's something that I absolutely, sorry for the language, fucking hate. I hate it when anybody says, my political opponent is a Nazi, or just like the Nazis. Yes, many people are using the Nuremberg defense So have many others. The Nuremberg defense, you know what that is? I was just following orders. I was just doing what the people who were legally in charge of me told me to do. Even though I knew it was wrong, or should have known it was wrong, or a reasonable person would have concluded that I knew it was wrong, I was just following orders. Remember what I talked about with J. Edgar Hoover? You can blame J. Edgar Hoover all you want for violating civil liberties, but there were still agents that went out and did that. Same is true here in the Durham report. You can blame the FBI all you want. You can blame the leadership of the FBI, but the truth is there were agents who knew that this was wrong when did it anyway. What I'm really angry about, though, is this disrespect being shown to the victims of the Holocaust. When you refer to your political opponent as a Nazi, unless they actually are a Nazi, You are basically shitting on the memory of millions of people who were murdered by the Nazis. The Nazis destroyed so many lives, not because they needed to. Well, they thought they needed to. Their argument was that they were defending themselves against an ideology or a people or a group or whatever. And this is literally the same argument that the KKK will use in the post-Civil War era. It's the exact same argument that segregationists in the South will use during the Jim Crow era. We're just protecting ourselves from those people by eliminating them. We had to do it. You understand that when you call your opponent a Nazi because you have a political disagreement with them. I don't like the fact that they don't want a debt ceiling. I do like the fact that they want a debt ceiling. You're a Nazi. You're just like the the Nazis. 
Do you realize what you're doing when you say that? Nazis, actual, real Nazis, took 900 Jews in Hungary and marched them out onto a frozen river and left them standing there. And then they shelled the river so that the ice broke up and the Jews drowned in the freezing river. Has your opponent done that? Nazis opened in May this month, Auschwitz in 1940, Sobibor in 1942, and gassed millions of Jews to death. Has your political opponent done any of that? I get that you disagree with them. I get that you don't like them. I get that you think they're bad people. But are they banal evil, willing to destroy millions of lives simply because you think so? Now, is it possible that the FBI could become that someday? Maybe. But let's stop today with the they're Nazis bullshit. They're not. And until they are murdering people simply because it's politically expedient or because they believe that those people are a threat to them, let's stop with the Nazi stuff. If you can't come up with something better, then you need to go study history or you need to learn how to speak English and how to use a thesaurus. Because they are not, in fact, Nazis. And even if they were Nazis, even if they were that serious problem that we, we say they are, this continued call to, we need to clean out the FBI, which many of my compatriots in this business are, are using right now. We have to clean out the FBI. We have to, we have to shut them down. We have to do that. That's not going to solve your problem. You realize that. You're not thinking again. The FBI is not the problem. You understand that? It's simply the arms. It's simply the mechanics of the actual problem. And unless and until we fix the political side of things, eliminating any alphabet agency is not going to solve the problem. It'll just be replaced by something else. <laughs> Speaking of Nazis, they replaced the SA with the SS, kept doing the same thing. They replaced the police with the Gestapo, kept doing the same thing. Well, we fixed that problem, but <laughs> there you go. I'm going to say something that's going to offend you. I don't care. If you want a true analogy to the Nazis, who are the actual Nazis? Look in the mirror. I I'm sorry to tell you that. Look in the freaking mirror. You know why? When the Nazis began their rise to power, nobody did a damn thing about it. They just said, well, it's politics. That enabled the Nazi party to begin to use the state agencies, their version of the alphabet agencies, to enforce their will on people. Remember that the government at any point could have removed J. Edgar Hoover, but didn't. They knew the abuses were going on but they didn't do a damn thing about it. They let him just go on his way, and they let him guide FBI agents into doing the wrong things that they knew were wrong, that violated the Constitution and the laws of this country. They knew that. They allowed it to happen. They were afraid of what would happen to them personally if they took any action against J. Edgar Hoover. They were afraid of that. They, they thought, ooh, what does he know about me? What if they tell people, you know, things that I've done? I'll lose my power and my position and my image. I will personally lose the things that I value, even though my oath is to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That means logically. Think about this for just a moment. Government did nothing, which means logically that the abuses that the FBI were known to be doing 
the violations of civil liberties that the FBI in that era was known to be carrying out. And oh, by the way, the ones that they are now known to be carrying out today are exactly what the government wants. You say that again. If nobody's going to stop them, even though we know this is going on, and if nobody's mad about it, nobody, we're not united in our anger enough to put a stop to this, it means logically that this is exactly what the government wants to have happen. The politics simply use the FBI to do the unthinkable for them protect their own power, their own positions. They were willing to allow the FBI under McCar- under Hoover and today to abuse the civil rights of Americans. Unless and until we clean out the politics, they will continue to use alphabet agencies to do the unthinkable for them because that's what politics does. And if we're not willing to fix that, we're just willing to Stand by and let it happen because, oh, I got a tax refund or I got a policy that I liked. (laughs) Look in the mirror because we are actually the problem.